Breakfast Television Weather is brought to you by Reactin. Provides 24-hour relief for your worst allergy symptoms. And there is a positive when it comes to rainfall. It's going to keep your uh, pollen counts down. So today, the total pollen level, and once again, that's an average of all pollen counts, is on the moderate side. Some of those plants out there and species uh, that are moderate are cedar and juniper. On the low end, elm, aspen, and poplar. But with this amount of moisture and some of the warmth that we've already seen and the warmth that we're going to see a little bit later as we get through the weekend, things are really going to start to pop out there and start to get growing. As we can take a look at the city of Toronto this morning, it is indeed wet. You need to build some extra time because not only are we seeing fairly persistent rain this morning, in some locations outside of the city, current winds are quite light. And that means we've had some fog patches develop, especially just over towards the west of the city in through the Caledon area. So just be aware that you could see some fog. And that fog really won't burn off because we're going to remain under the cloud cover. Nine degrees, when the fog will move out, is when the winds start to pick up this afternoon. Those winds will move to the northwest and keep our, our temperature that is a little bit cooler. Uh, the nine into Windsor. We're going to see a daytime high today, only about 11. Nine into Ottawa. Two right now in through uh, the area of Sudbury. So tomorrow, we're going to see a little risk of showers in the morning. So that continues. Wet weather all the way through into the early morning hours of Thursday. Then we'll clear out. We'll warm up to 16. 14. Evening cloud on Friday. Friday through the overnight into the early morning hours of Saturday. We're going to see some showers. They should wrap up by the pre-dawn hours. That means the weekend. Fairly dry to get a lot of work done outdoors. 13. But take a look at this. Monday into Tuesday, lots of sunshine and lots of warmth. 20 on Monday. 23 on Tuesday, an overnight low of 11. Today, your high, 11. Carry over to you with a look at the roads. All right. Thanks a lot, Frankie. Loving that. 20. And the 23 is even better. Woo, welcome May. All right, southbound on the Dodd Valley Parkway. We still have this stalled vehicle. It's just before York Mills, uh, mostly on the shoulder, but just a little piece of that right lane is blocked off. So you're going to find the southbound 404 Dodd Valley Parkway filling in pretty quickly, uh, especially as you're getting onto that DVP, those express lanes around Shepherd already getting backed up uh, to just south of York Mills, and then things improve right now. Uh, eastbound on the 401, that's gradually filling in from the 427 over towards the 400 express and collectors, but it is a trouble-free drive. Uh, westbound 401, you'll find some typical volume delays as you're traveling through the Durham region. And then again across Scarborough, it's just starting to fill in with volume. Uh, off of the major routes, problems with the traffic lights at Highway 7 and Islington. They are just malfunctioning, flashing red in all directions. Eastbound traffic on Islington, or eastbound traffic on Highway 7, rather, is already backed up from Kipling, so just avoid that stretch for the next little while. That's a look at traffic. Back to you, Mel. Well, the city is jumping into action to help out those affected by the tragedy in North York by setting up the Toronto Strong Fund. The city, along with the Toronto Foundation, will be setting, raising the money to help the victims, their families, first responders, and anyone else who may have been impacted by what happened on Monday. Victim Services Toronto and other supporting organizations will also help the efforts. And if you want to contribute to the Toronto Strong Fund, go to the website, go to our website, citynews.ca. We'll have all of the details here, but here's some more information. And uh, we'll be speaking to someone from the Toronto Foundation here on BT uh, coming up in the next half hour or so. All right, meanwhile, we're going to go over to Tammy, uh, who is live in the Young and Finch area where the memorial continues to grow, Tammy. And we are learning more about the victims. That's right, Melanie. The memorial's grown um, leaps and bounds since we were here yesterday morning. Uh, more flowers, more candles, and more signs of condolence, especially added last night during a, a mass vigil where a lot of people came out despite the rain to pay their respects. Uh, people from uh, diverse communities, diverse religious communities as well, coming to say their part and to at least pay tribute to the victims of this crash, the 10 who died and the 13 others who were injured. Now, as for the victims who we are just learning about overnight, we have 80-year-old Dorothy Sewell, a very large Toronto police or Toronto sports fan, rather, a big Leafs fan, according to her grandson. He has identified her as among the dead. Also, Chul Min Kang, known to his friends as Eddie. He was a chef at a downtown restaurant. And yesterday morning, we told you about Anne Marie D'Amico, a 30-year-old who worked here in the area as well as one she's been identified as one of the victims by her family and friends the coroner's office saying that it's taking them quite some time to officially identify the victims 
There's a number of questions that are being raised about when are we going to release the names, who are the people that have died, and when, when can we learn more about them. And told the family that we believe their loved one has died. And we've asked them to help us to develop a method to scientifically confirm those identifications. We have, as I say, notified families and told them that we believe tentatively that their loved ones have passed, but we've also provided great caution in that, and therefore we will not be releasing any of those names until we fully understand it. A Jordanian national and two South Korean nationals are also among the dead. Uh, South Korean media also saying that uh, one person was uh, injured as well from the country, as well as a female student from Seneca College who has yet to be identified among the dead. We're hoping to learn more about those victims coming up throughout the day. Mel, I'll send it back to you. All right, Tammy, thank you so much for that. And after being an active crime scene for more than 24 hours, the busy intersection of Young and Finch reopening last night. And also a reminder, TTC service as well as GO buses have now all resumed through the area. Keep in mind, though, the investigation is still ongoing. So Toronto police are asking the public to steer clear of the area if you don't live or have a business nearby. Now, while the entire, stands, entire city rather stands united in our grief over this incident, many people may need some extra support. Survivors, witnesses, friends and family of those affected being encouraged to contact victim services if you need assistance, if you need to speak with someone. The number here is 416-808-7066. And coming up just after 7 o'clock here on BT, we're going to be speaking to someone from victim services about how they are helping the community heal from this tragedy.